Okay, guys, so today we are going to talk about uh, mapping onto self. Let me find the page that we're on. Okay, and we're going to talk about rotational symmetry and reflection symmetry or line symmetry. Okay. And our standard is we're going to be given these different types of shapes and then and we need to describe the rotations and reflections that carry it onto itself. And what does onto itself mean? Onto itself means if I turn something or flip something, I don't move its position. It's just like I make I'm making it identical to itself. And I'll show you what I mean. All right. So um, here. Let's talk about what symmetry is. Symmetry is symmetry is when parts of a figure match itself. So when part of a figure matches itself. Now we're going to talk about two types of symmetry, rotational and reflection. Okay, an isometry is when a movement is done and we have two Congruent, and the word congruent means same figures. Congruent um that's a you y'all. Two congruent figures. And the type of movements we've been doing have been the rigid transformations and those are called isometries so when we move figures and the pre-image and the image match identically and those three types of um, movements we've been talking about have been translations rotations and reflections Right, so that's an isometry is when we move a figure and we have two two or more congruent figures. So our pre-image and our images match each other. Okay, so next we need to talk about uh rotational symmetry. Uh oh, let me get that back. All right, so next we need to talk about rotational symmetry, and all that is is turning. A figure about its center point and landing it on top of itself. And I'll give you some more. I'll give you an example. So let me go back up here and show you what I mean. So right here, I have two figures. I have a, a square and then a, a transparent square. So I'm going to turn the transparent figure so you can see. And that little dot in the middle is my point that I'm turning around. So I'm going to turn this and let you see how the square has what we call rotational symmetry. Because I can turn it about the center point. So if it's painting my fingers in the center. And I'm turning it. And this square is ending up on top of itself. Now there are a certain degree. That I'm turning this about. But I know my point of rotation. Is the center of the square. Okay. So that square has what we call. Rotational symmetry guys. Okay. Alright. 
um, reflection symmetry. So reflection symmetry is when a line of symmetry is placed on a figure and the figure is split in half okay so I'm going to show you that I'm going to use this same square that I already have so I'm going to use this green square, okay? Alright, so I have this green square, and the square has a bunch of lines of symmetry. But I'm going to give you an example here. I'm going to do dotted lines for you guys. Alright, so this yellow dotted line right here is what we call a line of symmetry because it splits the, the figure in half, and I didn't draw it straight. Okay, and then, oh my goodness. Hold on, babies, I'm coming. There we go. That's it. All right, that splits it in half. We have another line of symmetry right here. That one splits it in half. And that my lines aren't perfect, baby. Hold on, let me see if I can get some air right here. Oh, no, it's not going to let me move it. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. There we go. That's better. And then there's another line of symmetry that goes here. Here's another one. And here's another one. So all of these lines split this shape in half. Okay? Okay. All right, so these different lines cut this shape in half. And so a square has what we call both line symmetry, reflection symmetry, and rotational symmetry. So line symmetry and rotational symmetry. Sometimes you'll hear reflection symmetry called line of symmetry. Okay, now let's talk about what a regular polygon is. And we're going to use our square again. And I'm going to use the transparent one. So a regular polygon is when the sides of a figure are all the same length and the angles Or we'll say all the same degrees. Let's use that word instead. Alright. So let me go up here and show you what I'm saying. I'm going to use my transparent. Alright. So if we look at a square, you've learned from middle school that a square, all of the sides are the same length. So if this is 5, they're all five. So, and you learn that a square has four 90 degree angles. Okay? So a square has four 90 degree angles in it. So a square would be what we would consider as a regular polygon because it fits the two rules. All of the length of the sides are the same, and all of the angles in the inside of it are um, the same length. Now, we talked about an angle. We said that an angle was the space in between two rays. An angle is the space in between two rays. So, and I'm going to highlight here. I'm going to do it in red. So this ray, oh, I thought I was going to do it in red. 
So this ray right here and this ray right here meet at that vertex. So this is an angle. And the same thing up here. That red ray and the ray I can draw here, that's the angle in between them. And that's how you identify angles. And that's going to be very important for the next things we're going to learn too. So a regular polygon is when all of the angles are the same and all of the, the angles are the same measures and all of the lengths of the sides are the same measures. There are some other figures that are also in the world that are regular polygons. And you've seen them before. I'm going to go ahead and draw this one, give you one more. This right here, I'm going to call it an equal lateral triangle. And you've heard of this one in middle school before too. This is the equal lateral triangle. And an equal lateral triangle means that all three of the lengths of the sides are the same. So if this is three, this one is three, and this one is three, and all the angles on the inside are the same. So right here, this is 60 degrees, this is 60 degrees, and this is 60 degrees. And all of those are the same measure. So this is another example of the uh, regular polygon. And we have other ones too. You can have re regular pentagons, which is five sides, hexagon, which is six sides, Heptagon, which is seven sides, octagon, which is eight sides, nonagon, which is nine sides, and you can keep going. Decagon, which is ten sides, and you can keep that going. So let's get, get into this lesson. It says, can the following parallelogram be mapped onto itself? So if I look here, and I'm going to take a picture of this so I can show you guys what we're working with. Okay, let me get the camera. So we're going to do an area snapshot of this. Just a second, babes. I'm going to take a I'm going to take a picture of this, and I could have used something too. Let me get it around. Uh oh. Okay, I'm coming. Alrighty, and we're going to put it on the current page. Okay, so I took a picture of this. Let me see if it down. Alright, and I'm going to make it transparent. So it's asking me, can this picture be on a... Can this picture actually map on top of itself? So that's what we're getting ready to find out. So we need to see whether it has rotational symmetry or line symmetry. Give me a sec, babes. I'm trying to make this transparent. There we go. All right. So here's what we have. So we're going to test it. So it looks like if this is a parallelogram and it looks like I'm going to test out my rotational symmetry first. And in order for it to have rotational symmetry, I have to line this up. And then I'm going to turn it to see if I can turn this and get it directly back on top of itself. So I'm turning about that center point. And it looks like, ooh, I made a 180 degree turn. And it looks like it'll be right back on top of itself. And my picture isn't perfect, but... It looks like it would work if I turned it. So what we're going to say is we know that this picture here has 180 degrees. Okay, so we know we can rotate this 180 degrees about 180 degrees. Rotation. Oops. About the point, and we need to be careful because we turned around this center point right here. So we turned around the point two two, about the point two two, and the direction doesn't matter when we're doing a hundred and eighty degree rotation. So we turned it. 180 degrees about the point 2, 2. 
and that's right here to get it back on top of itself all right so we know we has rotational symmetry okay now next we want to check and see does it have line symmetry well if i look at this this line right here which i'm going to highlight this line at x equals 2 does not split this figure in half so i'm not it doesn't have line symmetry that way and if i go here and highlight this one this figure that line y equals 2 doesn't split this figure in half either and even if I tried to go diagonally and create my own line, look, it still will not split this picture in half. I won't be able to fold this and make it touch itself. And don't be fooled. It may look like the parallelogram can do that, but it's not. If you take a sheet of paper and you, and you cut it out and you try to physically fold it, you'll see this side won't match up equally to this side, nor will that side match up equally to that side. And there's a reason why it doesn't happen. Um, and we'll get into it a little deeper once we find those figures where it works. Okay, so here's another example. How can we map the square? How can the square be mapped onto itself? Well, let me go ahead and take a picture. Well, I'm going to use a shape because I have a square. I have a shape already. All right. And I'm going to go and make this little thing transparent so we can work with it. Alrighty. So I'm going to go make it transparent, the green one, so you can see the one below it. And it looks like it might have rotational symmetry. So it looks like I'm going to turn this and see what happens. All right. So if I stick my finger in the middle point of this and I turn it, so if my finger is right here, we're going to pretend my finger is right there, and then I'm just going to turn and I can match it up. This is my second time matching it up. This is my third time matching it up. And if I go around for the fourth time, then it's right back on top of it itself where I started it. So I can match this up three times, and we're going to talk about how we can figure out the rotational degree. But we're gonna say this figure has what we call rotational symmetry. And we're gonna say about the point. And you have to tell the person what the point is. And it looks like negative five and positive three and I'll get more into the degrees with you a little later I just want you to get the idea um, so it does have rotational symmetry about the point negative five and three okay now there's something else that we need to test too we need to test and see does this figure have what we call line symmetry or um, our reflection symmetry well if I draw a line right here looks like I split it in half and one line is enough, um, but it looks like if I put a line there, I'm good too. And if I go drop a line across here, it looks like I'm good. And if I go drop a line this way, I'm good. So this figure also has what we call reflection symmetry as well. So it has both. And sometimes the figures do have both. And I'm going to tell you later on how you can figure out how many lines of symmetry and what's the degree of rotation. All right, so it's your job to go ahead and knock this pic um, picture out. And we'll go from there. Uh, I think it's just one. Yeah, it's just one for your homework. So knock this out, and I'll see you guys in class, and we'll talk more about it.